in this short review we'll be looking at the Tiffin DFX digital filter suite for video and film and I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 for this exercise. Now I've actually reduced the screen resolution down to 1600 by 900 purely for the screen capture basis so the interface you're going to be seeing is actually a lot larger than I'm previewing here. Once we've installed the plugin we can find the filters under effects and we'll go to video effects and the filters will be listed here Tiffin DFX Film Lab, HFX Diffusion, HFX Grads and Tints, Image, Lens, Light and Special Effects. Now each of these categories has got several subcategories like we've got Bleach, Bypass, Cross Processing, Film Stocks, Flashing, Grain etc. And to apply any of these we just double click on the filter we want to apply and that applies it to this image here. Now we can set the parameters here by clicking on any one of these settings here and just changing the parameters. But a better way is to actually use the DFX interface and we can do that by just clicking on the setup button here and this now launches the DFX filter interface. On the left hand side we see presets. Now depending on which filter you've selected there will be numerous filter presets and to apply any of these we just click on it and it applies it to the image almost instantly. But we can also go to the right hand side where we can change some of the parameters. For this filter it's a dual grad so we've got orange to red. We can change that by just clicking on the orange and now we can select any one of any other color we like. Or just adjust it within there and drag down to make the color what we want. So OK and again that's applied and we can do the same with the bottom color. Just change it. OK and we can also fade the color so we don't find it's too much blue on there. We can fade that down and likewise too much red we can fade that down. We can preserve highlights, exposure compensation. The parameters are going to change depending on which filter you've selected. Once you're happy with all your selections there, and I'm happy with this picture here, we can save this. We can give it a new title and we'll just call this one Dancers. And then we just click on that Save New Title and there we have it. It's actually added to our presets list. So now if we want to go back to that Dancers, we can just click on it and we've got it selected again. I've actually created another one called Blue Brown and again we can just change the values on this like so. And there's another useful feature which is hidden at the moment but if we click on the word color we get a set of variations on this. So now we can actually choose any one of these variations on that particular preset we've created. Now at the moment I've got five variations selected but I can actually increase that to any number up to ten and we'll get ten variations on that particular colour. We can also choose two colours. So now we've got ten times ten so we've actually got a hundred variations and it'll take a while to go through all these but we can select any one of these and once we're happy with a particular setting I mean you can see the values will change on the right hand side here. We can actually save that again as another preset. At the top of the window here we've got the zoom controls. So we can zoom in on a picture and we can zoom out on the picture or we can fit the image to fit the window. We can also zoom in on an area here. We can also pan around the picture area so we can inspect all the different elements in that particular picture. So we fit it back to screen. The other one is the side by side comparison. In fact it should be one above the other really. So we can see the before and after there. Or we can use the vertical split and we can alter this by just dragging on the lines there. Make, or we can do a horizontal split again. We can see where the variations go. Or we can do a before and after. Just click on the before and after button and this will just toggle between the two. So as you can see there's a lot of um, adjustments we can make on this and if we press the letter H on the keyboard we can have a histogram showing us the various values in histogram form. 
Now unfortunately the D DFX interface will only show us one frame of the actual movie. There's no facility to view the entire clip. Once we're happy with this we can click on the done button or cancel if we're not happy with it. So we click on the done button and it returns us back to our Premiere Pro interface and now we can actually preview the entire clip with the effect. Uh, if we want to make further adjustments we can actually go into these parameters here make adjustments accordingly and that will just change things. That's the sky being changed now. So if you prefer to work in this interface here we can work in that. Once you're happy with that we will see there's a red line above this. Unfortunately it's not Mercury Playback Engine accelerated but the filters are multiprocessor accelerated. We can just press the enter button and that will render the file and as you can see it's fairly fast. I mean this is a four and a half second clip and it's processing it in something like about 10 seconds or maybe slightly longer. Once it's rendered we can play it back in real time. There are numerous numerous filters. I'm going to delete that filter from there. Just highlight it and just press the delete button. That filter's now gone from here. One of the ones I particularly like is the polarizing filter. So if we go onto the special effects filters and just click on it and drag it to a clip and drop it on there. There we go. So now I'm going to go back into the DFX interface and I'm going to choose a polarizer 10 for this. And in fact, actually, I have got one saved called My Polarizer. And we can see that the sky's darkened considerably on there. Um, one, of the, one of the side effects is actually that anything that's slightly blue will also be polarized. It's actually polarizing the color. So not a true polarizing filter in the sense of the word, but we can apply quite realistic effects to it. Um, you would have to mask off some of the areas, especially if you had a, um, something blue in the foreground which you didn't want to be sort of uh, emphasized. You'd have to mask it off, but there's no masking facility in the video version of DFX, although there is a, an excellent masking facility in the Photoshop plugin version, um, but not in the video version. Um, again, you can see now that we've increased our parameters. Now we've got far more options here. And so now we'll click on Done. And the reason I wanted to show you this one is because there's a very strange effect happening here. And you can see the sky just changing in color as we go along. If we play that, the sky is flashing a bit in places. And at first I thought this was actually a fault in the application but not so. On the effect controls here we see there's a force 16-bit. Now this plugin works in both 8-bit and 16-bit. If we force a 16-bit on, that's it, and we can see now that the full polarizing effect has been applied to the entire clip. The 16-bit only works on certain filters but on this particular one it works. So now we just render the setting and you can see it's quite a fast one on this particular one. And now when we play that we've got a polarizing effect applied to the entire clip. There's over 2,000 filters included with this plugin but some of the new highlights are the color shadow we apply that to this image and this overlays a color gradient and we can edit this color gradient and and one of the ones I particularly like if we go on to our variations. This is blue to red. And a few of the others that I particularly like. The film stocks here. If we double click on the setup box we can now choose whatever film stock we like to work with. And it gives you all sorts of effects from faded colors through to ag for films. And loads of monochrome films there. And you can have hours of fun just finding that right look. And of course, we can also edit all these looks on the right hand side. Another interesting thing are these gobos. And these overlay various gobos onto your thing. There's a lot of religious ones. Um, these work particularly well if you're doing a green screen and you can actually drop these in as a backdrop to your actual footage. And you can also blur them more so they needn't be so in focus. I don't want to blur them too much, but 
as I say, there's loads and loads of them on there. We've got stars, all sorts of things like that. So you can have hours of fun with those. Um, one thing I did find rather peculiar, the light settings, and these are identical to the gobos. I mean, again, there's lots of uh, different religious ones, all sorts of things on there. And you can actually reposition these anywhere you like on the screen, any of these gobos. Um, we can alter the size of them. We can also rotate them. The permutations are limitless. As I say, these are best when you use them on a green screen and you use them as a background or something. So gobos are traditionally placed in front of light sources and then projected onto a background. The other effects I quite like are the looks. Again, these are fairly similar to film stocks. We've got 8mm black and white, 8mm colour. We can turn the grain on and off on this as well. So just click on there. And we can, we've got stacks and stacks of um, parameters that we can mess around with. And there's lots of choices here. Any of these can be fully customized to give the effect that you particularly are seeking for your movie. I think these are absolutely terrific set of filters there. Lovely soft glow there, halo, green, black and white. And that's a, that's a rather nice effect there. Alter the color very slightly make it slightly darker or slightly lighter and we've got a terrific effect there. Another one that is particularly useful is this day for night effect. Although it doesn't particularly work well on this image you can actually create some nice um, nighttime effects with this and and there's plenty of permutations on there so you can have any time of the night right through. Um, but you'll obviously need to add some more in there. Maybe um, use some masking facilities just to highlight somebody here and you can create some terrific effects with that. And finally, I've created an old photo look on this particular bit of footage. Here we've got all sorts of different settings from Cyanotype, Calitype, Light Cyan, Palladium, Platinum, Sepia, Silver, Silver Gelatin and Van Dyke, whatever that is. I've actually slightly tweaked the Kali type and made it slightly lighter and we'll say OK on that one. Now if you want to apply this entire effect to your timeline what you do is you just right click on the clip and we copy and then we right click on our next clip and then we do paste attributes and that will copy over the entire effects that you've just applied so you need an actually um, highlight every clip you can just paste the entire timeline or overlay it as a an adjustment layer. Um, now the next thing to do is just to render this which as you can see it's as a fairly fast process um, with this particular filter. Some filters may take slightly longer but this one's okay this only takes a matter of a few seconds and then once it's rendered it should actually play for us. Uh my name is Lenangurun Taremogurak, Metepiritonkop, but you can call me Stiff. So in conclusion, the Tiffin DFX Video Film Plugin, which works with Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro, Apple Final Cut Pro and Avid Video Editing Suites, is highly recommended. It gives you plenty of permutations, although a trifle bit expensive at $599. Having said that, I think it's well worth the money and it will open up many new creative possibilities for those with an adventurous mind. A full written review can also be seen on photoeye.co.uk.